Hello, and welcome to this quick snapshot of the January Market Intelligence Webinar from IMIX Group, How to Capture More IT Business from HHS in 2018. And when you look at an organization as large and complex as HHS, it is very difficult to identify some overall trends or strategic drivers of technology acquisition. But there are some clear patterns that we see repeated across all of the component agencies within the department. And really, they boil down to the idea of A by May. In other words, improving FITARA scores for the department so that by May 2018, they are receiving A's from Congress in the areas of data center optimization, portfolio management, and software license management. All that said, even according to their own strategic plans, the agency doesn't really have a plan in place to get those server utilization and virtualization numbers in line with what OMB wants by May of 2018. And so there is a clear opportunity for the COTS industry, especially those of you who work in the data center, to reach out to HHS and start to drive some of that progress. We're also seeing cross-cutting requirements for two major technology areas. The first of those is data, data management, storage, and analytics, and also security, maintaining uh, the security of HHS networks in the face of over 500 million attempted attacks per week. Of course, achieving all of those goals is very dependent on what the agency's appropriations or funding ends up looking like. In fact, that is more true at HHS than at most other non-defense agencies, because this is an area that so far has been a real focus of the Trump administration, and they've really tried to put their stamp on this department in ways that we haven't seen in some other areas. What that means is that the difference between a continuing resolution and an omnibus or new appropriations deal in FY18 is huge. If we do get an omnibus, then it's safe to expect that the modernization projects that we're hearing leadership wants to pursue will be full speed ahead. And you'll be able to target those data centers as well as target folks leveraging the new work and capital made available to them by the Modernizing Government Technology Act. However, if we have a continuing resolution for the full year, you're going to want to circle the wagons, strengthen your relationships with existing customers, but also make sure to dig into FY17 requirements because they are pretty dramatically different in some cases from what we're seeing in FY18. And there may be an opportunity for you to message to customers who have money that, frankly, they weren't expecting to receive. Also keep in mind that in CRs, you can always target tech refreshes for new license opportunities within HHS. And down at the individual optives, we see a lot of these patterns borne out as well. But in each case, there's a little bit of a unique twist. So at CMS, you're dealing with an enterprise that is frankly enormous and very reliant on systems integrator partners. That primarily comes from their large virtual data center program where they route much of their contract dollars through DXC to operate a contractor-owned data center in support of their mission. CMS, as a result, has a lot of hybrid cloud requirements that we don't see in other areas, and it affects the way that you approach their data center optimization needs, because in many cases, you will be working directly with contractors or integrators to support that. Now, on the data side, uh, something that hasn't changed is that CMS is continuing to focus on quality. They need analytics to make sure that when they are paying healthcare providers, they're doing it based on the quality of their outcomes and not just on volume. Nothing new, but something that we continue to see emphasized in this year's budget. Now, if anything, the Food and Drug Administration is even more reliant on integrator partners, and that's because for years there was a significant absence of top leadership positions and the FDA IT organizations. They had a lot of vacancies. Because of that, their single largest IT contract vehicle is GSA's professional services schedule. And that's why you see things like OpenFDA, a truly innovative approach to data exchange and collaboration with the research community. But on the other hand, 
a significant concentration of contractor influence at the highest levels of FDA's organization. Now, outside of headquarters, there is still opportunity here at the Office of Regulatory Affairs, where you're going to want to message around supporting researchers and the scientific community, as well as FDA's uh, enforcement personnel in the field who need mobile support to make sure that imports coming into the country are safe. And finally, the National Institutes of Health, which has been fighting an uphill battle on technology standardization for years out of their Center for Information Technology, or CIT. And that is not a struggle that looks likely to resolve itself anytime soon. However, they may look to take advantage of the new flexibility provided by MGT Working Capital Funds, as well as the Trump administration's focus on shared services as a means of reducing federal IT costs to try and once again reopen that conversation. So look for another push for standardization of common requirements at CIT. Outside of that, there is always a need at NIH to better share terabyte scale data sets because the researchers here need to be able to exchange enormous amounts of data quickly in order to collaborate effectively on the types of challenges that NIH was set up to address. And that was just a brief sample of our January Market Intelligence webinar covering health and human services. To access the complete recording, please go to the URL that you see on screen here or head over to the webinar section of the IMIX Group website. My name is Chris Wiedemann. You can find my LinkedIn information here. Feel free to connect with me and reach out with any other questions you may have. And of course, if you are an IMIX Group supplier, reach out to your point of contact on the account teams here to get engaged with the market intelligence team. And finally, make sure to follow our blog at blog.imixgroup.com, where you'll find actionable intelligence from the market intelligence team, as well as Imix Group's wider group of public sector sales experts.